brothers, real sisters, welcome to Real Power for Greatness, where you are empowered to walk in your great destiny in Christ without apologies. Real Power for Greatness is brought to you by Real Brothers, Real Sisters. It's the world's first global one-on-one -on -one Christian and professional mentorship network for all youth and young adults across the body of Christ worldwide. My name is Wesley Ogude. If you are born again, youth, young adults, anywhere in the world, you are my real brother, you are my real sister. I am your real brother. But if you are wondering what does it mean to be born again, what is royal brother, royal sister, what is God's amazing royal family of believers, that would suggest to me that perhaps you have not yet embraced the opportunity someone gave me several years ago to become a member of God's amazing royal family of believers worldwide. I make a promise to you that at the end of this conversation, I will give you that opportunity. Um, today's uh, um, episode is titled, um, How to Handle a Loss of Job to be Wealthy. It is episode number 44. <clears throat> and I am super excited to bring this episode to you. But remember that this is a conversation, so I want to continue to receive your thoughts. I'm always excited to receive your thoughts and your comments and your questions. I will make time to, um, to answer them. You can always reach us at rbrs at royalyouthforchrist.com. And um, if you also think that God is leading you a way to become part of our global um, team, anywhere in the world, as long as you're born again, please uh, feel free to shoot us an email and um, a member of our team will be happy to walk you through what is required to bring you on board. Um, and please, please don't forget to, um, to subscribe to all our channels across, you know, all of our platforms. And please do share these life transforming messages with uh, youth and young adults in your space. Um, in today's episode, it is the part two of, you know, how to handle the loss of job. Um, if you haven't seen the part one, I would really encourage you to go um, and look at part one and listen to it uh, on our channel, Royal Brothers, Royal Sisters. And so by way of opening comment, as we wrap up this part two, um, we saw in part one um, that the experience of a loss of job um, in, in the course of one's career can be very challenging. It is like having a flat tire on, on a highway. It is true that if one has a, ha a flat tire on a highway, it, uh, it may lead to temporary setback to get it fixed and get you back on the highway. But it certainly does not mean the end of one's journey. It is the same thing with the loss of job. Um, I have by God's grace, enjoyed tremendous, you know, promotions, uh, double promotions um, on my job in my 25 years career in the corporate world. But I've also suffered a, a couple of setbacks, such as loss of job. You know, people all over the world, for example, um, have bounced back, you know, from a loss of job. So if you are there, maybe you are experiencing a loss of job or you know somebody who, who is currently going through such an experience, I will encourage you to please um, share this life transforming video. I believe God will use it, you know, my own story and experience to encourage someone. So all over the world and, you know, people have lost jobs and, you know, they lost fortunes, but they have, they have, you know, bounced back to become extraordinarily successful, you know, you know, and, and God can do the same for, for, for you uh, because God did that for me. In part one, I shared with, with you the story of um, Harry Truman, 33rd President of the United States of America, to illustrate the point. So if you haven't seen part one, please go review that. I believe it will bless you. Unfortunately, there are also people who have allowed temporary loss in career or business to permanently, you know, end their, their career or even their lives, you know. An example I want to share with you is a German billionaire called Adolf Marko. Adolf Marko committed suicide, you know, because of a temporary setback in his career. He was the head of his family business, 
uh, which had about one one hundred thousand you know employees um he was the 94th richest person in the world at that time in 20 in 2008 and he was the fifth richest man in in germany according to forbes magazine under his leadership uh, unfortunately the business made a huge investment in volkswagen shares um, which skyrocketed at that time unfortunately the shares of volkswagen you know came crashing and the company lost billions of euros adolf marco felt so powerless and hopeless that he took his own life but not too long after that guess what volkswagen shares recovered but at that time he had he had taken his life so this is a sad example of uh, you know allowing temporary situation like a loss of job to affect one's life permanently for you and i as children of god you know a loss of job loss of money loss of business um you know when those things happen to us we should not feel hopeless your future is bright and you know god is not done with you if you are there and you are having such an experience you know um you know that was my story you know uh, which i have shared with uh, with you in in part one and i will share more of that in this part two you know to have such great outcome that will lead to testimony then we must know how to handle such temporary challenge such as a loss of job that is why i am very passionate to share this uh, this this message with us that god can use such you know loss of job or temporary setback in our career to launch us into um incredible breakthrough and and in fact to become wealthy and that was the experience of my wife and i and now we want to answer three questions the first question we want to answer is what could possibly lead to the loss of one's job that's question number one number two what should i never do if i ever lose my job number three how should i handle the situation to possibly position me to become wealthy if we handled such a situation as a loss of job or loss of business in a godly way help allowing the holy spirit to help us navigate such difficult terrain in our journey uh, god can use it um, to give us an uh, incredible breakthrough so let's answer the first question what could possibly lead to the loss of uh, one's job Okay, loss of one's job, you know, or any type of financial other difficulties, they happen to both believers and unbelievers, you know. Um, even when we are living right and doing everything that is pleasing to God, it does not exonerate us from such challenges. The difference, however, is that victory is guaranteed even if we are not exempted from the battles of life. Here is how the scripture puts it in Psalm 37, verses 24. 3 to 24 in the voice verse edition of the bible the scripture says if you are right with god he strengthens you for the journey the eternal will be pleased with your life and even though you trip up you will not fall on your face because he holds you by his hand so god is holding us god is holding you um in this difficulty or difficult time that you may be passing through God is, has not abandoned you. God has not left you. That was my experience. So let's talk about, you know, um, what could possibly lead to one's job. We said there are six factors that we want to share in episode one and two. In the first episode, we share, um, you know, the first three. In this episode, we are going to share four to six, right, to complete it. So number four, what could lead to, you know, uh, to the loss of one's job? It could be an unjust implication on the job. This is because, you know, maybe somebody lied against you, conspired against you, or tried to victimize you because you are a believer. This was what happened to Joseph in Genesis chapter 39 from verses 12 to 15, when his, his, uh, his boss's wife implicated him because Joseph would not sleep with a woman. You know, at times, you know, your strong Christian stand for God may attract discrimination against you, uh, which may lead to loss of job, delayed promotion, or at times demotion. Um, I remember my own example. I, I used to work in the sales and marketing uh, department, you know, in one of the very glamorous banks where I worked because of my career. 
and then I started a Christian fellowship. You know, it was as if it was unheard of. Shortly after that, I was taken from the front office where I was more visible, you know, meeting customers and all that. I was thrown into the back office, internal control. And um, everybody was shocked because, you know, um, it wasn't expected. But I knew what, what, what happened. Um, but guess what? God used that situation to prepare me for my CA designation. And today, internal control experience has proved has proven to be very, very beneficial to me as a CPA and as an entrepreneur today. I understand the back office and the front office. So it worked out uh, for my good. You know, so another thing that could happen that could lose, lead to loss of job is um, changing ownership of a company. That is number five, okay? Changing ownership. Companies get bought over by new owners and they may decide to maybe shut down a location, a plant, a depot, a retail outlet, and it may affect, affect the employees, both believers and, and unbelievers. You know, a, a, the, such a company that is bought over may decide to pull out of a, a, a market, you know, a, for, a foreign market, you know, maybe a, a foreign company comes to buy you know, a local company. Um, it happens in Canada a lot. U.S. companies come to acquire Canadian companies and then they shut down some locations that could affect somebody's job. You know, they may also bring in new management team and those team members may bring in their, their you know, people that they want to work with. So those, those are practical reasons why, you know, there, there might be lots of job. You know, um, example, in, in the bank where I worked, you know, entire management team may be cleaned out cleaned out in one single day uh, just because there is a new ownership. So number six, general economic downturn. A good example is COVID-19. COVID Many people lost their jobs, both believers and non-believers. Major economic downturns have happened in the world and they will continue to happen. You know, the economic circle, you know, the economy goes up in circles all over the world. You know, we, we saw in the early 200, we saw, um, we saw the dot dot com bubble bust and we saw I, many IT companies in in Silicon Valley, you know, you know, they, they folded up. People who thought they had high tech jobs, secure jobs, lost their jobs. What about the subprime mortgage crisis in two thousand and eight and two thousand nine that led to the collapse of over four thousand banks in the US. You know, so many other you know, many people lost their jobs. People could not pay their mortgages, but there were economic crises and things like that. So these are things that happen from time to time at such economic downturn you know it could lead to you know they can suspend some projects some contracts may be cancelled and then they don't renew your contract maybe you are on contract and you're hoping they will renew it a lot of things happen they may lay off people as a result of that and so on and so forth so when things like that happen um, we as believers um, God has our back God has our back and we must never give up um, and 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 when things like that happen we should it's a time for us uh, you know to to pay attention to some of the things that we have been sharing in this episode now the question we're going to answer next is this what should I never do if I ever lose my job there are certain things we should never allow ourselves to do but before we answer the second question, let's take a quick break um, and get a message from our sponsor, RBRS. Don't go away. I'll be back shortly. Thank you. Mentors encourage and enable their mentees' personal and spiritual development. Royal Youth for Christ International Fellowship, RYFC, the world's first Christian and professional one-on-one -on -one mentorship program called Royal Brothers Royal Sisters, RBRS. RBRS is a life-transforming, goal-based one-on-one mentorship program for youth and young adults in the body of Christ across churches, cities, and nations. RBRS aims to empower Christian youth and young adults with the living word of faith and offer focused guidance that will lead them to develop their potential, fulfill their destinies of greatness in Christ Jesus, and effectively impact their generations with the power of the gospel. The mentorship relationship will be built around six key areas from which each mentee can set their mentorship goals. An intimate relationship with Jesus Christ, outstanding career success, talent development and entrepreneurial abilities, preparing for and building a blissful marriage, outreach and missions, and leadership development. 
To learn more and apply to become a mentor or a mentee, visit us at royalyouthforchrist.com forward slash RBRS. Yes, thank you. Now let's answer the second question. What should I never do if I ever lose my job? Now there are certain things we should never do. We have gone through, you know, we said there are six of them we want to cover in, in these two episodes. We covered one to three in the first episode, uh, in the part one of this episode. So number four, okay, we are going to cover four to six now. Number four, never think it's the end of your career, your progress or your life. Never, never think it is the end of it, okay? There are some so-called, you know, dream jobs, you know, when, when somebody loses, you know, such jobs, and, you know, people think, wow, it, it maybe, you know, or you, the devil may be making you think that that is the end of your, of your, of your career or the end of your life. And for example, people work in oil, you know, large oil companies like Mobile, Shell, Chevron, people working in large reputable financial institutions such as World Bank, Central Bank, Bank of America, Mary Lynch, JP Morgan, and those, you know, big names. Or people working in, you know, big, you know, global multinational IT companies, Google, Meta, you know, Apple, Amazon, Oracle, IBM, SAP, name it, you know. I worked in some of these huge companies. I used to work in a company called CGI, the fourth largest IT consulting and outsourcing company in North America. You know, I was laid off from that company, right? But today, it's, it's, it doesn't make any difference in my entire, you know, in my entire destiny, okay? Those things are just another job and God can open better doors for you. God can give you better you know, future in spite of loss of job in such a place. So never think it is the end of your life or the end of your career, even though the enemy may want to make you and I feel that that is not true. Number five, never think it's the end of your career or end of your, your, your life. Okay, number five, never consider yourself a failure. Number five, never consider yourself a failure. I understand the struggle of, you know, uh, the struggle with self-esteem that comes with losing a great job because I have been through it. I also understand what it means for, you know, all the respect, the, 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 the big corporate title, official car, and all the executive perks to disappear overnight when one loses a great job <laughs> because I have been through it. I understand it. But never permit yourself to think you are a failure because you are not. This is a temporary situation and if handled well, God can make you bounce back more gloriously because that's exactly what he did for me and he will do the same for you and much more in Jesus, in Jesus name. I remember when I lost my job as a, as a, as a director, um, you know, it was, it, it, was a, it was a painful experience, right? The car was gone, you know, so many of the perks were gone, but today God has restored those things over and over again. So God can do the same uh, for you. So never consider yourself to be a failure. In Zechariah chapter 9 verse 12, the New English Translation uh, uh, version of the Bible, NET, the scripture says, return to the stronghold, you prisoner with hope. Today, I declare that I will return double what was taken from you. God can return double. According to John C. Maxwell, sometimes in his book, sometimes you win, sometimes you lose, he said the quality that distinguishes a successful person from an unsuccessful one who is otherwise like him is the capacity to manage disappointment and loss. Disappointment and loss come, you know, to people you know, but the capacity to manage it, particularly when we are children of God with all the great promises in the scripture, that capacity will distinguish between who will be successful in life and who will not be successful in life. But here I am today, all of those, you know, loss of job, loss of official cars, my official car was stolen even after I lost the job. At, at some point, I, all the perks were gone. But today, God has restored all of these things are much more. He can do the same for you, so don't consider yourself to be a failure. So let's go. Number six, what we should never do, okay? Never allow yourself to be discouraged, even if it was partly or entirely your fault. There are times, um, you know, maybe 
the loss of job was as a result of your fault. Well, we all make mistakes in life and we have all done regrettable things. So, you know, so just simply ask God for forgiveness and move on. According to my mentor, John C. Maxwell, he said, none of us does life so well that we are far away from doing something dumb. We've all done dumb things. We've all made dumb decisions. We've all made mistakes in life. So forgive yourself and move on. Now remember the story of the German billionaire Adolf uh, Marco that I shared with you um, at, at, the, at the beginning of this particular part two of this episode. Uh, what, what happened to him was that he blamed himself for allowing himself you know, to, to lose so much of the fortune of the family. You know when the business declined you know and then um, he couldn't re he couldn't forgive himself he allowed himself to slide into hopelessness and what happened to him he he, he took his life and um, unfortunately shortly after that you know things turned around but at that time he had taken his life so don't allow yourself to be discouraged okay and so um the, the scripture says in job chapter 14 from verse 8 to 9 the scripture says in the new century version um, NCV. The scripture says, if a tree is cut down, watch this, there is hope that it will grow again and will send out new branches. Even if its roots grow old in the ground and its stump dies in the dirt, at the smell of water, it will board and put out new shoots like a plant. You know, I've experienced in my 25 years in career in the corporate world. I've been experienced being underemployed. I have experienced, like I said, I have experienced going back to start at, you know, entry level. I've experienced being demoted and I've also experienced being promoted, double promotion and all of those things, right? Those things, they, they come and go. But like a tree, when those temporary setbacks came, in my own case, God make, made new branches to spring out of my career. Today, those setbacks, they mean nothing to my life any longer. You know, God has kind of moved me and my wife on and um, um, to the glory of Jesus Christ, um, you know, those things don't, they, they don't matter to my life any longer. And then looking back now, you can, I can say to the glory of the Almighty God that God is a, a restorer and God, God has greater destiny for his children regardless of temporary setback. So don't allow yourself to be discouraged. I believe that God will open great doors and it will set your path on the, on the higher pedestal in Jesus' name. Now, the, the third question we need to answer here is, how should I handle the situation to possibly position me to become wealthy? Okay, there are things that could help us in handling the situation that even what looks like a temporary setback could become, could turn out to be one of our greatest blessings in life okay so um let's look at it um we say there are there are six factors we want to consider in in episode uh, in part one and two of this episode so in part one we looked at three and we are going to look at the last three which is number four to five um, to six rather so number four what how should i handle the situation to possibly position me to be wealthy number four stand firmly on God's word that it will work together for your good. Stand firmly on that word because that's the promise of God. The process of God restoring your job or loss may involve some ups and downs, you know, but remain unmovable in your faith with God. In Romans chapter 8 verse 28, the Amplified Bible says, and we know, we are not guessing, watch that, we know with great confidence that God, who is deeply concerned about us, causes all things to work together as a, as a plan for good for those who love God, to those who are called according to his plan and purpose. Okay, that's what the scripture says. You know, I remember my own experience when, um, in, you know, some of my, you know, experiences I've shared with you. In one of those experiences, I wrote over 150 applications looking for a job. I got all sorts of rejections. 
you know, I received a lot of rejections and eventually, you know, I worked in a startup group of companies. And guess what? That startup group of company experience turned out to be one of the greatest experiences I've had in my career. Why? Because after leaving that company, a few years later, I was able, by the very special grace of God, to begin to start up our own companies, group of companies. And today we have group of companies. You know, my wife and I, you know, our family, we have group of companies. We have company, companies in Canada. We have company in, the, in Nigeria. We have company in the U.S. The experience came from that, yeah, that loss of job when God restored me. How should I handle the situation to possibly position me to be wealthy? Um, we just considered number four. This is number five. Number five, take steps to put serious plan B in place after you find a new job. Okay? Now, after all the prayer and fasting and all the spiritual you know, exercise, praising God that we discussed in, in, part, in part one of this message, now you have to settle down and begin to look for jobs seriously. Do a serious job search. If you have to retrain, retrain. If you have to do new courses, you know, hone in your skill or learn new things or even change your career and, and things like that, you know, do all you need to do. But as soon as you get a new job and you settle, then start developing a plan B so that you don't rely on one income again and so that you don't rely entirely on just your nine to five job, okay? The loss of my own job, it happened to me, I think about, you know, two, two or three times in my, in my entire career. The last two, you know, um, they were wake up calls for me, okay? One of my mentors put it this way. I want you to listen to this. He said, it is a crime to have only one source of income. Let me repeat it again. It is a crime to have only one source of income, according to that, my mentor. Now, what he was saying to me didn't make sense to me. Uh, before I went through, you know, the painful experience of loss of job and all of those things. But after going through that experience, what my mentor was saying made sense to me. Today, I can say to you, if you are there, youth, young adult, all you have is your nine to five job and nothing. And if anything happens to that job today, it could throw your life into a tumor. It is, according to my mentor, it's a crime you know, to have the only one source of income. So you have to begin to have a plan B. But even if you have not lost your job, everything is going on well and things like that, but you still need a plan B. Why? Because the job will not go on forever. Okay? Ask people who are in their 50s and people who are in their late 50s, they will tell you that job will not go on forever. Even if you are not in, you don't get to your 50s or 60s, anything could happen from all of what we have said earlier. A job could be gone overnight and you don't want to be left exposed. You don't want to be left stranded. So that is it. Take steps to put serious plan B in place. In Proverbs chapter 9, verse 12, the contemporary English Bible, CEB, the scripture says, if you are wise, it is to your benefit. If you are cynical, you will bear it all alone. In other words, if you ignore some of these things they are saying because you have not experienced it, then such a person is going to bear the loss, is going to bear the, 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 the consequences alone. But if you are wise to learn from the mistakes that others have made, one of the biggest mistakes you can make in career is just to rely on your nine to five job, okay? If you have not listened to one of the series we, we, we just concluded on this channel, that series is titled 10 Common Career Mistakes to Avoid to Be Wealthy. If you have not, I would strongly recommend that you go back and listen to that series. It's a three part series on our channel. One of the mistakes we discussed in, under that series is just relying on nine to five job. So for me, putting a plan B in place became very clear to me. The importance of doing that after I had very, very nasty and very challenging experience of lo job loss. And um, after that, you know, I was determined to, be, to begin to put a plan B in place and I don't ever want to, 
you know, put myself, my future, and the future of my entire family at the mercy of an employer, the experience turned out to be one of the greatest blessings in disguise uh, for my entire career. And today, that is why I can share with you that to the glory of the Lord Jesus Christ, uh, never again can any employer anywhere in the world hold my life to ransom. So number six, you know, how should I handle the situation to possibly position me, you know, to be wealthy? Number six, make the goal of financial independence a non-negotiable pursuit. I repeat, make the goal of financial independence a non-negotiable pursuit. Sooner than later, you need to understand, as youth and young adults, that your job will ultimately be gone. You don't own that company, okay? So until you are able to replace your 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. income, your life and freedom will be at the mercy of your employer. You have heard me share my own experience. After working for 17 years, I needed three weeks to go to my country, to travel from Canada to my country for the first time. Um, it took me two years to get approval and after that the boss that I had said you know that I should take my laptop to where I was going so that I could be walking all the way from there after working for 17 years well to the glory of God nobody can tell me that today so make sure that you um, you make the, the goal of financial independence non-negotiable what does that look like? Well, financial independence is when you no longer need your 9 a.m. to 5, um, 5 p.m. job uh, for the rest of your life to be able to, you know, maintain your living standard, okay? Now, for most people, they don't even ever set the goal. That's a huge career error. It's a tragic career error. That's a huge error. It's a red flag in anybody's career. So make sure that you set the goal and pursue it. Uh, for example, the greatest blessing that came out of my own experience of loss of jobs, you know, it was a wake-up call to pursue financial independence. Without those painful experiences, I wouldn't be here today fulfilling, you know, my destiny and, and my calling, you know. Today, by God's grace, I'm free from any employer, any government, any company, any boss. I have my freedom and my liberty to the glory of the Lord Jesus Christ. God is able to do much more for you. And, you know, if you take the bold step of faith to pursue this awesome goal of becoming financially uh, independent, there are ways to do that. And we have covered that in, you know, some of our, our other, you know, conversations on this channel. Now, let me close this series with the words of R.T. Kiyosaki. He said, the future belongs to those who can change with the times and use personal disappointments as building blocks for the future. I find this to be true from God's word and from my own personal experience and of course the experience of my, my wife. If handled well, God can help you and I use a loss of job or any of that disappointment to position us to build lasting wealth such that our job can never even offer us anything close to that okay now i'm going to wrap up you know we have you know in this two part series we have answered you know three questions the first question is what could possibly lead to the loss of one's job we got we went through in a number of it number two what should i never do if i ever lose my job we went through that in part one and two and then lastly we concluded how should i handle the situation to possibly position me to become wealthy we also went through that now i want to keep my promise if you have been listening to me you know um but you do not know the lord jesus christ as your personal lord and savior or you you gave your life to jesus christ some time ago but something happened you got disconnected i want to have the honor and the privilege to uh, to give you the opportunity somebody gave me several years ago. Um, in Romans chapter 3, verse 23 and then verse 24, the scripture says, um, for everyone has sinned, we all have, we all fall short of God's glorious standard. 
yet God in his grace freely makes us right in his sight he did this through Jesus Christ when he when he freed us from the penalty of our sins Jesus died for you and I to free us from the penalty of our sin all we need to do is to repent of our sins and embrace this free gift of salvation Jesus put it this way in Mark chapter 8 from verse 36 to 37 what shall it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his soul listen if a man loses a job loses money loses you know position one can gain it back okay and it has happened over and over again I've shared my experience and the experience of so many people you can but when a man loses his soul by dying without knowing Jesus Christ would have been saved it's an eternal irredeemable loss that's not what God wants for you and I so I want you to accept the Lord Jesus Christ and embrace this opportunity someone gave me it was on the 19th of July 1987 um, over 37 years ago that somebody gave me this amazing opportunity it changed my life forever so I want you to please bow down your head and pray this prayer uh, after me say Lord Jesus I acknowledge that I am a sinner please forgive me I believe that you died for me and on the third day you rose again I accept you as my personal Lord and Savior in Jesus name if you pray that prayer I believe if you did it sincerely I believe you got born again you are now my royal brother and my royal sister now I want you to uh, look for a Bible believing church near you and become a part of that uh, local church everybody uh, belongs to a local church in the kingdom there is no orphan in the kingdom including myself and my family who belong to a local church in addition to that I want you to please go to our website and go to you know www royalyouthforchrist.com and click on RBRS and then click on RBRS Convert. Complete that form and as soon as you submit it, somebody from our team will reach out to you because we want to be part of you know your amazing journey with the Lord Jesus Christ. This will, this will bring us to the end of this episode and I cannot wait to bring you next you know, episode. Just stay tuned until I come your way next time. I am your royal brother Wesley. I love you all. God bless you. Mentors encourage and enable their mentees' personal and spiritual development. Royal Youth for Christ International Fellowship, RYFC, the world's first Christian and professional one-on-one -on -one mentorship program called Royal Brothers Royal Sisters, RBRS. RBRS is a life-transforming, goal-based one-on-one mentorship program for youth and young adults in the body of Christ across churches, cities, and nations. RBRS aims to empower Christian youth and young adults with the living word of faith and offer focused guidance that will lead them to develop their potential, fulfill their destinies of greatness in Christ Jesus, and effectively impact their generations with the power of the gospel. The mentorship relationship will be built around six key areas from which each mentee can set their mentorship goals. An intimate relationship with Jesus Christ, outstanding career success, talent development and entrepreneurial abilities, preparing for and building a blissful marriage, outreach and missions, and leadership development. To learn more and apply to become a mentor or a mentee, visit us at royalyouthforchrist.com forward slash RBRS.